Okay, I've gone ahead and opened up richardplatt.net and I'm at my website and let's go over here. You know, we got the home, we got teach right here. We're going to select on teach and we're going to come down to tutorials. Now I'm going to click on the star here and I'm going to come over here to our basic drafting uh, and CAD portfolio. Now again, we're going to create all these drawings and to do so now we've, uh, we've already for the most part have created all our AutoCAD and we've created all our uh, manual drafting ones and let's focus on this first one here this is the uh, part number one we're actually going to design that part number one in SolidWorks now so I'm going to click on this we've done it in AutoCAD which looks great and then now we're going to come over here and we're going to create this um, situation right here this drawing but in order to create the drawing we have to in SolidWorks first create a part and I'm going to show you how to do this right here create the part and create the drawing and also create a logo that you can map to the surface of the part. Now we'll use Adobe Illustrator to do that. But for right now we're going to leave this up and I'm going to jump down here into SolidWorks. I've gone ahead and opened up my version of SolidWorks which is version 2019. Now you may have 2020 on your computer at home or 2021. That's fine. SolidWorks doesn't make too many radical changes to the user interface. It pretty much stays the same. So I've got two ways to actually create my first part. I can create a new from the pull down here, or I can go over here to this uh, heads up display type icon here at the top, this ribbon here at the very top, and create new. So I just create new. Now when it comes up, it comes up in what's called the novice view. Now in novice view, you can create a part, you can create an assembly, and you can create a drawing. Now in order to create the assembly and to create the drawing, you've got to have a part first. So we've got to create a part. Now I'm going to show you this advanced tab real quick. I'm going to teach you how to eventually create your own custom templates as you see up here. Now I notice how this one is highlighted as part. Well that's the default one that it comes up. But I've got one set up for dragster. I've got one set up for imperial. I've just left the basic one for, for uh, assembly. But I created a custom one for drawing. That's why if you look here you see your four views. So well, let's go back over here to novice and let's click on creating a part and hit OK. Now SOLIDWORKS goes out and opens up the view of which it would be if you were creating actual parts. Now before we get started, let's look at some housekeeping here. You've got up here, this is called the command manager. The command manager is all your typical commands you're going to use for extrusions into 3D and cuts and whole lizards and lofted and all that stuff. Then you have your sketch where you draw sketches. Now one important thing to note about SOLIDWORKS. In the world of 3D, there's different kinds of three-dimensional modelers. There's one's called NURBS. It's a NURBS modeler. It stands for Non-Uniform Rational Beast Lines. A product like IronCAD is an example of a NURBS-based modeler. Um, and then you have what's called primitive-based modelers. Uh, a primitive-based modeler is where you create taruses, cubes, spheres, cones, and you draw from there. SOLIDWORKS doesn't work that way. SOLIDWORKS always works from a sketch as your starting point and then you create whatever you want to create. Well, that's how we're going to use SOLIDWORKS today. Well, the other tab I want to show you is the evaluate where you can hit measure and you can measure something by clicking on the faces. I'll get out of that. And so these are the three primarily ones we're going to use over here. Now down to the left here is what's called your feature manager. It has the planes on which you draw on. You have your front plane, your top plane, your right plane. Anyway, that's what we use all the time in doing manual drafting is we create our front view, we create our top view, and we create our right view. And so we're actually going to work off these planes. Now before we get started drawing, I want to show you this thing again in the lower right. It says editing part and you've got it says inch pound second. Okay, well I've already set it to inch pound second. I can create it. Most of the time when you come into SOLIDWORKS it's going to be set to MMGS or millimeter gram second. Well, we want to set it to inch pound second. Now, there's two ways to actually do that. I can set it right here, or I can come up here to options here at the top. That's gear, and it opens up these two massive um, tabs that you can look at. Well, we're not going to concern ourselves with this right now. We're going to go to document properties. Well, typically you'll come up and it'll say ISO, like right here, International Standards Organization. We're not going to use that. We're Americans. We're going to draw using ANSI, American National Standard Institute, which is our top front right and then isometric view. Now the other thing I just showed you down here, we got inch pound seconds here at the bottom. You can also come up here to units and you can change it here. Now most of the time when you come into a new SOLIDWORKS file, it's only set to two decimal places. We don't work in two decimal. We work in four decimal places. So we'll come up here and select that. If I had dual dimensions running, I can set my four decimal places there 
angle I always set to four, length I always set to four. I don't worry about motion and time down here unless I'm doing a motion study or a 3D animation. I don't care about that right now. Hit OK. So now, if you notice up here, I got this this pop-up display. Yours looks different. You've got fewer commands than I do. Well, I've highly customized mine, but I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Now, I want to come up here and I'm going to show you. You don't have Photo View 360. You're going to need to have Photo View 360. So let's put show you how to get to that. See right here where it says Add-ins from the Tools pull down. Click on that. What I want you to do is make sure that you've got this checked right here. You check that and you check this over here because you're going to need to know how to use this when you add your decal to your part, your logo to your part. So we're just going to go ahead and cancel on that. So make sure you got those two collected, uh, selected. Let's go back to that one more time. Click on this here and then click on this every time you start up that your Photo View 360 is up. Photo View 360 is for renderings, for putting decals on your part, and creating you know custom files that you can use for your portfolio or whatnot. So we'll cancel that out. Now let's customize our display. Go to Tools, come all the way down here to uh, this down arrow. Oh, I've already got it all the way down. See where it says Customize? Click on that. So there is my customizer. This is kind of daunting seeing all these tabs up here like, you know, toolbar, shortcuts, commands. Well, just click on command. And I'll show you how to do this custom display. Now, I've got all these customs display up here. And notice how you got all these different sets of commands. Like you've got surfaces, you've got tools, which are actually quite nice, by the way. And then you've got weldments if you're doing a lot of welded parts. And you got standard. Well, I'm going to put standard up here for now. I want to play with that. Well, if I want to put a command up here, like the save file, just grab this, stick it right there. That's all you got to do. I'll come up here and grab another one, stick it right there. That's all you got to do. Well, if you don't want those up there, which I don't want those up there, I'll just grab this, put it back over here. Grab this, put it back over here. And it automatically knows which set to go to. So if you're down here at surfaces, it'll, instead of putting it in surfaces, it'll put it back up here in your standard views and stuff. Well, that's customized for right now. Now, what you ought to do is experiment. Notice how I got my front. I've got, notice what it said Control 1 right here. I've got my back, which is Control 2. Well, if you come across here, you've got all these different up to Control 6. I don't use those control keys too much anymore when I'm doing tutorials, but if I'm working really fast, I'll always use the control keys. But I have those up there anyway. I've got over here it says shaded with edges. Now I can get to shaded with edges by clicking on one of these pull downs, but I went ahead and added it because I don't want to click on a pull down. I've gone ahead and added my trimetric, diamet, an isometric, and I've got my perspective view. That's actually pretty cool. So, and I've got some various windowing commands here section cuts is standard, and then I'll go ahead and just kill that. Now I don't like this gray background here. I like to work on paper. So I'm going to come over here and click on this. And I'm going to go plain white paper. So now my paper's white. I like that better. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and start making our part. Well, again, I got my front, I got my top, and I got my right. If I click on this, it pops up this window here. Well, I can start drawing straight on that sketch, but I want to orient it and be sitting right on top of that front plane. So I'll click on that. Now, let's show you a quick command. Sometimes if you're zoomed way out, you can use your middle mouse button to roll up back and forth like this using the middle mouse button. Now if I want to I can hold my control key down and push down on my rolling wheel on the middle mouse button and I can pan like that. And That's why I also put this guy up here so if I wanted to zoom to fit I just click on gotta get out of that command here first of all let's go back to top plane and I can hit zoom fit. Well it doesn't zoom fit because I don't have a part on there. That's the problem. All right, we'll just come back up here and roll up. Now, let's start, since we're now normal to that plane, it'll kind of flip it around. I can flip around again. I'm normal to that plane. I'm actually on that surface. We're going to come over here and select our sketch command. We're going to create a new sketch, and we're going to draw a corner rectangle. Now, if you hit that pull down, you got all these different kinds. Make sure you set to corner rectangle. I'm going to draw a little corner here, pull this out. Okay, got a sketch. Now, I hold my control mouse button down. Or I can hit my zoom to fit, it zooms it right up there. Hit my control mouse button, I can pan it around. Let's go back to zoom to fit. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I got this cube. I need to give it some sizes. Well, let's go back to our drawing and let's look at that. Okay, it's five inches by two and a half inches. Easy peasy, we can do that. 
So we'll come up and use this command called Smart Dimension. Now I'm going to set the height of this to two and a half. It comes up with some arbitrary size. It's actually almost two and a half. Well, I can key in now on my keyboard 2.5. This is a good time to turn on your num lock on your keypad if you have a desktop computer with a big keyboard. I can hit enter or I can change the units. Well, I'm going to say it's in inches. Make sure I stay in inches. And I can go ahead and hit this check mark. I'll do that this time. So I hit the check mark. Now the sketch is, is two and a half. Now let's set the length of this part. See how big this is. Oh, it's totally wrong. I don't want that. Move this out of the way. Well, this time I'm going to key in five. Instead of hitting the check mark, I'm just going to hit my enter key. So now it scoots it out to five. All right, that looks good. Accept that. Now, notice how it's got this little street light sign here. Well, that's called your rebuild. What it rebuild does is it cleans up your geometry, makes sure all your files are correctly drawn, and it X's it out of memory and command. So we're going to do that rebuild up here. Now, notice it says Control B. I use Control B quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and accept that. I won't use Control B this time. Now, it makes it gray, which means I've exited out of that command. Well, if I want to extrude that command to an extruded boss base, I click on that. It says, well, find the sketch. you got to have an existing sketch. Well, I can come down here and click on that, and it'll extrude it. Okay. Well, I don't want to do it that way. I'm just going to get out of that for right now. Go back to my front view or front view this way. Okay. Here's the other way I can do it. Let's hit the rebuild again. I've hit rebuild. Notice it's gray again. I can right mouse click on this and I can edit that sketch again. Well then I can go to features and I can do an extruded boss. Now it'll default and come up to 0.1 and if you've had it to another size it'll default to the last size you used. Well in this case, let's go back to our drawing, it's one and a half inches deep. Okay, go back to SolidWorks and we're going to key in 1.5. I'll hit enter and now it's extruded it out to 1.5. Now we have a 3D model. Well, let's talk about material. Material is where you can set the different kinds of you know, features of this. Is it steel? Is it brass? Is it copper? Is it whatever? If I right mouse click on that, I have these defaults that come up. If I go 1060 alloy, I turn it into aluminum. If I come over here and right mouse click again, I can turn it into plastic. It makes it transparent, ABS plastic. I can turn it into rubber. I don't make many rubber parts, so I'm not too worried about that. I don't do tires or shims or gaskets or whatever. So I'll do a right mouse click here and I can say plain carbon steel, which is what most people use. I can also come over here and I can do edit. If I do edit, it defaults into steel. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click on wood because we'll actually make a lot of wood parts here in, in our, our classes. So we'll make maple, I'll make pine. Pine is the least expensive wood. Teak is very expensive. So is mahogany and others. So we'll select pine and apply hit close and there's our part in wood well we're not going to make a wood part because our drawing down here shows it to be copper so we'll change that before we change that I want to show you another command the other command is the evaluate let's come over here instead of measuring it well let's do a measurement we'll measure from here to here make sure we got this drawn correctly to there and that says it's five inches it also says it's five inches over here and I can copy that if I need it it says the height is 2. Well, okay, let's do a right mouse click and clear that. Let's measure this. That says 1.5. Okay, cool, we drew everything correct. So we'll get out of that. Now, here's the other one I wanted to show you. This is called Mass Properties. It tells me my weight. It says that this is a little over 2 tenths of a pound in weight. That's kind of cool, about 3 or 4 ounces maybe. Now let's go ahead and get out of that. And let's go back and change it to what the drawing said, which is... Oops, cranked up SOLIDWORKS again. Don't want to do that. All right. We'll come back over here and look at our drawing. And our drawing says it's copper in the drawing title block here. So we'll go back to SOLIDWORKS. We'll come over here to Properties. Right mouse click and we'll change it to copper. Now, remember it was two tenths, a little over two tenths on a pound in our evaluate and mass properties. <clears throat> now, that's a big old chunk of copper. It's six pounds of copper. Copper is very heavy. Okay, we're going to fix that. We'll get out of that because we've got to make a difference to the part. If we go back and look at the difference to the part, it's not a rectangular shaped part. It's a triangular shaped part. So we've got to fix that. Go back over here. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw off of this face right here. So I'll select it. And when I select it, let me step out here for a side. I'm going to select it. It pops this up. And I can say normal too, which means I'm setting on the surface of this. Now I'll come back over here to sketch. I'll create a new sketch. I'm just going to click up here this edge. Look right there. And it brings up this cool drafting uh, uh, triads and, and tools here. And I'll click on this edge here. And I'll snap to that corner. Move here and close off that sketch. That ah, looks pretty cool. Now, we've got to make that sketch smart. So I'll accept that and I'll do smart dimensioning. I'm going to roll out a little, roll out a little bit. And I'm going to click on the edge of that sketch. And I'm going to click on the edge of this part. It's a little over an inch, which we want it to be an inch. So I'll go ahead and select one. Now that's an inch. Wait a minute, we've got a problem over here. This jumped off the edge. Okay, we can fix that. What we have to do is set up a relation to tell that sketch, hey man, you're stuck on the side of this edge. So we'll come over here to this pull down and we'll hit add relation. So I'm going to select on that sketch because I want to change him. And then I want to select on this edge and I want it to be part of my, my solution. So I'm going to set a say I'm perpendicular, which is perpendicular now. Excuse me, it's it's perpendicular to the bottom here. I didn't set a say I'm parallel. I, I don't want that. So I'm going to come over here and select collinear because I want that sketch to sit on that edge. And boy, did it. It jumped right over there on that. That's good. So now we set up a rule for that sketch. We've got two rules. We've got a dimension here, and now we set up a relation that says collinear. <clears throat> well, let's go ahead and add the other dimension. I'm going to click on the bottom of this part. Click on the edge here. It's almost half an inch, a little over half an inch. I'm going to say 0.5, and I can hit my check mark here, and it'll change it to that, or I can hit enter. All right, now, the sketch looks pretty good. I'm going to rotate the around in 3D by using my middle mouse button by pushing down on it. And I'm going to accept that dimension. I'll go to Features. Now, I can extrude that, and it'll step out here like that. Well, I don't want to do that, so I'll cancel that. I want to extrude cut that. And what it does is it looks at the depth of the part that it's currently set at right now, which is one and a half inches. Well, if I ever change the depth of that part, it'll still stay one and a half. So instead of that, I'm going to go ahead and say through all. So anytime I change the part in the future, it's always going to do that extruded cut through the part, no matter what extruded size that I put it at. So I'll accept that. Now, that looks like the part we're after. Well, let's go back and do evaluate, because remember it's six pounds of copper. Let's do mass properties. Wow, we knocked two pounds off of it. Well, that's good. That'll save us a lot of money, because copper is expensive. It takes a lot of pennies to make you know, that much part right there. Okay, so there's our part. We've done everything we needed to do to create this part. And now we can look at it in different views, uh, diametric, uh, we can look at it in trimetric, we can look at it in isometric, and we can even do a perspective view of it. I can come over here and I can turn on my, take, turn my shadows off or turn my shadows on, or I can get out of that uh, perspective view. Well, I'm going to go ahead and set it back to this front view, and I'm going to save my part. I'm going to do a save as. And I've already done this part a couple, three times. So I'm going to come over here and go to ver this version here, and I'm just going to save it to that. Now I do part one with a different version. Actually, let's go ahead and make it part. Two. Let's make it part one, version two. Let's do that. Okay. So now we've done that. Okay. So now what we need to do is figure out how to map a logo to that, and we'll do that in the next tutorial. Mm -hmm.